From the Millersville University Weather Center, I'm student meteorologist Stephen Kerr with another edition of Weather Watch. Today we'll be talking about the landfall of Hurricane Francine, which just made landfall maybe, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes before recording this video in southern Louisiana. Let's get right to it. You can see on the sat visible satellite here, uh, the center of Francine, kind of about where my cursor is, it just made landfall. It briefly had a little bit of an eye feature here. If I go to radar, you can see the eye wall kind of tried to wrap around the southwest side of that core. And as that happened, you had more uh, sinking air in the center and you were able to clear out a little bit of an eye before landfall. Uh, and the National Hurricane Center did upgrade Francine to a category two in the hour or so before landfall at 4 p.m. Central Time. And they did that based off the Hurricane Hunter observations. They went in and they found flight level winds up up around 100 knots, uh, which is usually supportive of a of a 100, 105 mile per hour hurricane. The usual rule of thumb is those flight level winds. You multiply you multiply them by about 90 percent, and that's your surface estimate. But then we also have these uh, surface wind estimates. It's called the SFMR. Um, which estimates the winds right at the surface, kind of using how choppy the waves are. Um, uh, and those estimates were only around 75 knots or 85 miles per hour. And they, they often use kind of a blend between the two and also were pretty close to land. So there's some decent radar data as well. They kind of incorporate all those things in and taking all those into effect, the high flight level winds, the lower surface wind estimates, um, and they kind of blended the two and came out with an estimate of about 100 miles per hour before landfall. If I look at the infrared satellite loop here, you can see this blow up of convection this afternoon. And this kind of ovular shape is kind of is a good sign that the storm was under some pretty intense wind shear. And that was kind of causing the storm clouds to stretch out like that. You can see the the upper level clouds really fanning out to the northeast that's a good sign of that outflow being enhanced by the uh, trough that's in proximity to the storm meanwhile the outflow to the southwest is kind of impinged on a little bit not not fanning out nearly as nicely and again that's because of that that wind shear coming out of the west and southwest uh, but you could see right before landfall that little explosion of convection on the northern side with the uh, northern eye wall and that's actually whoops that's actually pretty common with these landfalling hurricanes you get a, a beefy eye wall right on landfall as you can get kind of increased convergence in the eye wall with the friction over the land slowing the wind down and you can kind of get a, a more substantial eye wall and i suspect that's what caused that explosion in storms uh, on the north side right before landfall so let's go to the National Hurricane Center. They have uh, a cone here. You can see uh, by tomorrow, it's expected to be in central Mississippi as a tropical depression. And it's kind of gonna slow down and just fizzle out over the Mississippi Valley near the, the boot heel of Missouri. And that's because, well, here in Millersville, at least we've got some really spectacular weather this week, this big area high pressure, and that's just gonna squash this storm in its place. It's not gonna, have a chance to curve up into the Ohio Valley and Northeast as some of these storms do. So it's kind of going to die over here in Arkansas, Tennessee as a remnant low. So we don't expect impacts to spread Northeast of there. And you can see here we have uh, these reds or hurricane warnings uh, for much of Louisiana and they actually extend inland several parishes. And then we have these tropical storm warnings that extend even further inland into Mississippi into even the southern coast of Alabama there and we can look at the rainfall potential from the National Hurricane Center you can see these yellows those are a forecast of at least four inches of rain from Francine and these brighter colors in southeast Louisiana near New Orleans uh, six to eight maybe even locally above eight inches of rain forecast so flash flooding definitely a concern here the weather prediction center has a moderate risk of flash flooding out for southeast louisiana as well as southern mississippi uh, for today and taking a look at the storm surge forecast you can see that the peak surge in the kind of the south central louisiana coast of five to ten feet on the east side of that eye wall wherever the storm makes landfall here if i go back to the radar 
east of that center is where you get this strong onshore flow, and that's where you get your greatest storm surge. So that's where we're expecting it on the east side of the uh, landfalling storm. And then we also expect storm surge even to the west of the eyewall, and especially further east there you can see the storm surge extends out pretty far east from the center of the storm, which is why you know, meteorologists always say to not focus on the track of the storm or the cone because those impacts extend pretty far out. And you see moderate storm surge of two to four feet all the way to Mobile Bay and the Florida border. So storm surge, definitely a big threat with this. I've already seen videos of flooding out of much of southeastern Louisiana with this storm. Definitely seen a lot of wind reports. If I go to... Uh, go to this map here you can see and I'll actually refresh it because I think this is a couple of minutes old I'll turn off the warnings I'll turn on the radar and I'll turn on the observations and you can see the um, the core of Francine over southeast Louisiana it looks like New Orleans might get into that far eastern eye wall uh, already wind sustained over 20 miles per hour gusting over 40 miles per hour in New Orleans uh, and then if we go to the Storm Prediction Center, you can also see that we have a tornado watch up with this storm in southeast Louisiana, southern Mississippi um, for the next several hours. That's until 11 p.m. Central Time. And they'll likely keep issuing these tornado watches through tonight and tomorrow morning as that tornado threat is expected to continue uh, into Louisiana, Mississippi, and eventually into Alabama tomorrow. You can see that slight risk getting into eastern Alabama tomorrow in the Florida panhandle. Uh, tornado threat hasn't really been in much of an issue right now. I'm looking at the mesoanalysis here, and this is the CAPE, the instability in the atmosphere. And you want values greater than zero, at least, for the potential for tornadoes and severe thunderstorms. And you can see that's pretty much all bottled up along the coast, except for the um, extreme southeastern Louisiana. So we're not getting instability building inland quite yet. And until we get that, I don't expect uh, that tornado threat um, until that happens. But the tornado watch means that that certainly can happen at any moment. So that's something to keep a close eye on. Uh, this website uh, broke on me. There we go. Going back to this site. I turn on the observations and we can see some of the surface obs. I'll go back to that. Hopefully it'll load. For now, I'll look at the uh, models. Here's the HRRR model for, uh, for this evening into tonight. You can see that landfall and you can see these, these bands that it expects to move onshore um, with potentially embedded supercells into Mississippi, Alabama, Florida. But the biggest threat with this is that super heavy rain. This is where you can see those rainfall totals locally over four inches in spots, especially I think in Southern Mississippi uh, where you could get an extended period of heavy rain where you kind of get this, this, this band of thunderstorms move through and then the core of Francine as well. I could see that being an area of especially heavy rainfall and flash flooding. And then you can see this is tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time, so uh, 9 a.m. Central. You can see the core moving over the Mississippi Alabama border, and you can see that band of thunderstorms that'll have that heavy rain, gusty wind, and isolated tornado threat as well. Uh, all right, this isn't loading, so I'll, I'll just ignore that. Uh, what I was going to show was the winds. We have some weather stations reporting some pretty gusty winds along the coast, uh, gusting over 70, even 80 miles per hour with that eye wall. Again, it may landfall with 100 mile per hour winds. We don't usually see those sustained hurricane force winds at max intensity make it to land because that wind slows down over land with friction. So if you get a 100 mile per hour land falling storm, you're probably not going to see 100 mile per hour sustained winds on the land. But you could certainly get gusts that high and that could that could certainly do a lot of damage to trees, power lines, damage roofs, homes, things like that. So thinking if there's anything else to cover here, I think I've. We've covered just about everything. Storm surge and the rain, definitely the two biggest threats. And then keep an eye out for that uh, isolated tornado threat. I mean, I will say this is a setup that does sometimes favor these tropical tornadoes, although it hasn't yet. Uh, when you get this interaction with the trough here, if I go to 
250 millibars. You can kind of see this trough that uh, centered over the plains that's affecting the system, that's lifting it northward. And it'll, it induces the shear on the storm, which also allows dry air to punch in along the south side. And then when you get that nose of dry air on that east side of the storm, sometimes you can get this sort of arc of supercells that develops with an enhanced tornado threat. And even without the tornado threat, you can get exceptionally heavy rain, rainfall rates to over one, two inches per hour, and gusty winds, maybe gusting 40 to 60 miles per hour with those kind of storms. So uh, as usual with these landfalling hurricanes, there's a lot of threats to keep an eye out for. Uh, so that's certainly the uh, Atlantic, uh, not really quiet anymore. We have that record quiet stretch and we just uh, kind of ended it pretty abruptly with this hurricane making landfall in Louisiana. Uh, last hurricane landfall in Louisiana, I believe was Ida in 2021. Uh, I might be forgetting something, but uh, yeah, certainly not a place that needs it. I do, one thing I do know is they've had a lot of hurricane landfalls uh, over the past several years. So um, hopefully everyone stays safe out there with the storm. Hopefully you've enjoyed this edition of Weather Watch, and we'll be back the next time there's any sort of interesting uh, severe weather across the country. So thank you. Thanks for watching.